There were urgent meetings between the Pleiadians and top Russian military brass before the war broke out. The Pleiadians have advised against a full-scale Russian military operation in Ukraine. From their perspective, the main objectives could be reached by Russian peacekeeping forces in Lugansk and Donetsk, and with refusing to react to Jesuit-backed provocations from the West, who want to create World War III to fulfill their end-time prophecies. Putin has succumbed to pressure from some of his Jesuit-controlled advisors in the Russian military and the Russian Orthodox Church, and the Jesuits got the war they wanted, but it will not go as they have planned. Putin has chosen the moment of maximum weakness of the West, at Pluto's return to attack. His main goal is to demilitarize Ukraine to secure Russia from immediate military threats, to clear dangerous biolabs and to purge Ukraine from neo-Nazi elements. There are many factions within Ukraine with strong neo-Nazi inclination that have committed heavy crimes, often with tacit approval from the Ukrainian government. The Jesuits are influencing Ukraine with their Zionist proxies as Russian minorities in Ukraine are being harassed to a great extent. Sources have stated that Russian military is not purposefully directly attacking civilians in this war, and there is a great deal of disinformation propagated through the Western media. Russian forces took Chernobyl nuclear plant, and are clearing secret bioweapons labs in Ukraine. Sources have also stated that the goal of Russian military is not to topple Zelensky, and that the Russian military will retreat as soon as the strategic goals listed above will be reached, which is in about two weeks as per their estimate. If Jesuit-controlled Western allies do not manage to escalate the situation further, Peace in the region could realistically happen in a few weeks. Positive sources have drafted a peace proposal that could work, if people on both sides use common sense and are willing to reach a rational compromise. Ukraine can be accepted into EU, and Zelensky stays as a legitimately elected president, but Ukraine must stay out of NATO forever, remain militarily neutral, such as Switzerland, and all foreign military aid to Ukraine must cease, as per 1990 NATO guarantees of non-expansion to the East. Ukrainian government must ban and criminalize all neo-Nazi organizations on its territory and rights of Russian minority in Ukraine must be respected. Crimea must be internationally recognized as part of Russian territory, as per 2014 Crimean status referendum. Donetsk territorially all Donetsk Oblast, and Lugansk, territorially the whole Lugansk Oblast, must be internationally recognized as sovereign independent countries, as per 2014 Donbas status referendum. As soon as above conditions are met, all Russian military must leave the rest of Ukrainian territory immediately. As soon as that happens, all international sanctions against Russia must be cancelled and normal international relations resumed. It is very unlikely that reason will win because the Jesuits will do whatever possible to undermine any peace proposal, but it is worth a try. Nevertheless, financial sanctions against Russia will accelerate developments of alternative payment systems such as SIPs in China and SPFS in Russia, weaken the already declining petrodollar and reinvigorate the BRICS alliance. Ascension Plan Update Time has come to release the next portion of the Ascension Plan for this planet. Some intel about the Ascension Plan was already released in a previous update. Since then the plan has evolved, and new intel was given by the Light Forces. Most importantly, the Light Forces have communicated that the Ascension window of 1975 to 2025, will not close in 2025, but will remain permanently open. This means that energies will keep increasing, and since 2025, the ascension energies will forever permanently flow from the galactic central sun, through our solar system, towards the planetary surface. The light forces have refused to comment what that means practically, for the timing of the event. Based on the intel I have, I can make an educated guess and speculate for two possible scenarios. The first scenario predicts the event in 3 to 15 months time frame from now, and then a fast transformation of the surface human society, 
until the galactic pulse in 2025. The second scenario predicts the event in 2025, and the galactic pulse a few years later, but earlier than 2030. Be aware that these dates are just speculations, and may be wrong, since they were not directly confirmed by the light forces. Also very importantly, there was a substantial change to the Ascension plan, when Project 501 collapsed in the summer of 2019. It then became absolutely clear to the light forces, that surface humanity will not be able to undergo healing and liberation without direct physical intervention. And that surface society will have to go through a slow collapse, until direct intervention can be safely introduced, without dark forces destroying the planet. Therefore the original plan, with three ascension waves between the event and the galactic superwave was too ambitious, and had to be revised. So here is the revised ascension plan. First, the increased energy from the galactic central sun will continue to purify all the remaining quantum and subquantum anomaly. Around the planet and beyond, and the light forces will keep removing all negative non-physical entities. Second, the solar activity will keep increasing, as we are coming closer and closer to the solar maximum of solar cycle 25. Early predictions were estimating that cycle to peak in July 2025. But now scientists are expecting the solar maximum in late 2024. Early research of Alexander Chijevsky has shown that 60% of all social unrest happens within a year and a half of each solar maximum, therefore we can expect monumental societal changes. Between early 2023 and early 2026, that is a year and a half of the current solar maximum of solar cycle 25. And with prophecy of Bainsadono, all negative timelines will collapse, and all timelines will converge into the event. At the time of peak social unrest and with enough anomaly removed, the light forces will upgrade the current state of emergency for the surface of the planet into martial law. This practically means that the whole surface population will undergo a brief 3-7 to seven day military lockdown, during which the mass arrests will be taking place. People will be instructed to strictly stay at home, to ensure the safety of military operations without collateral damage. Positive forces will be using quantum pulse weapons to block the weaponry of the negative military, and to freeze the troops and civilians who will refuse to obey the orders of the positive military. There is still a large aspect of the event plan that needs to stay classified, and will be a big surprise almost to everybody. After the event, the surface society will undergo a drastic transformation that will take a few years. General surface population will keep integrating intel about exposure and disclosure that will be released through the mass media and begin to heal their deep psychological wounds from the dark past. While the most extreme psychopaths and sociopaths will be removed from the surface of the planet at the event and shortly after, Many latent sociopaths will remain in the society until the galactic superwave, and keep a low profile without causing any harm, knowing that any harmful action would trigger their swift removal. It takes quite a long time to completely purge a system. After the event, the vast majority of light workers will go through a massive healing process, with much assistance from positive energies, angels and light forces. There is a lot of self-healing work that needs to be done, and it is expected that a few years later when the galactic pulse arrives, about 2,000 people will be ready to ascend in the first wave of ascension, which will coincide with the galactic superwave, and the planetary evacuation. Those preparing to ascend in the first wave will be living in islands of light, which will begin to be formed shortly after the event. They will connect with their twin souls, many of them being on the motherships. They will expand their horizons beyond past programming, and start forming soul relationships. During the evacuation, the ships of the Ashtar Command and the Galactic Confederation will rescue the surface humanity from the galactic tsunami. After the evacuation, and after the Earth goes through its transformation, only beings fully aligned with light, estimated about a few million light workers, will be allowed to return and re-inhabit the Earth in Islands of Light, and prepare for the second and third wave of ascension, which will happen relatively soon afterwards. 
The mass of humanity will be evacuated in their physical bodies just before the galactic pulse, and transported to the planet in the Pleiades star system which already inhabits about 70 billion humans, which were evacuated from the astral plane of planet Earth in 1999. About 500 million of surface evacuees, mostly sociopaths and psychopaths, and many of them Dracos and reptilians who came to Earth in 1996 to 1999 period, and were living since then in human clones on the surface, will not be able to fulfill the minimum criteria for evolution, and will be taken to the central sun for restructuring. This effectively means the end of darkness and suffering for the whole universe, and a new cycle of luminosity can begin. Victory of the Light